Hello, today I'll be going over the May Long Challenge for Code Chef problem number three, which is titled Triple Sort. So the one of the fastest and most efficient ways I found to solve this is that if we have our input, we can write as eight, four. We can actually just go through this entire array and mark certain indices of the array as visited. So we can create a visited array which you would have as a Boolean array, marked as false for all eight indices in the array. We can have three vectors. We can call one cycle. We can call one answer. And we can call one double. And this answer, we would have it as a tuple. And the double we would have as a pair. And the cycle would just be a normal vector. And we can also have a counter for the number of cyclic shifts we count. So in order to solve this problem, what we're actually going to do is that we're just going to traverse or just go straight through this array. And for each indice or position in the array which is not visited, we're going to mark as visited and go through a cycle. So this is how it goes. We first check this index over here as 2. We see it is not visited, so we mark it as visited. And in the array, we mark as visited. Then we look at this number two and go to that index. So if I were to write down the indexes here, we would see the number two and we go to the second index, which would be this element over here. We mark this as visited. We mark the second index as visited. And then we go, we check the one and we go back to the first index. However, the first index has already been visited. So we can end there and while doing so, we can import both the one and the two indexes in our cycle. Now, seeing how if we have a cycle with three integers, a, b, and c, we can see that this would already be one cyclic shift, which we can put into our answer. However, seeing that we only have two integers, one and two, we're actually just going to save this into our double vector over here, which is a pair. So we have one in the double vector. And then we can erase the cycle. Then we can move on to the next elements in the array. We see a four is not visited, or the four in index number three is not visited. We mark it visited. Then we check the four here. We go to that index in the array, which would be over here. We mark this as visited, and mark the index as visited. Then we check the six. We go to that index in the array, and then we see the three. Mark that as visited. Mark the index 6 as visited. And then we go back to 3. However, 3 has already been visited. So, because it's already been visited, we can end there. And we can import all three numbers, which are the indexes, into our array. 3, 4, and 6. We can import it into cycle. And then seeing how this is a set of three numbers, we can directly add it to our answer as a cyclic shift. Therefore, we have one cyclic shift, and we can increase our counter to one. And then we can remove this from our cycle, because we have completed this cycle. Next, we move on to seven. And then we mark the index as visited. We check this number. We go to that index, which is over here. We do the same exact process, mark it as visited. And then we check five, but five has already been visited. So all what we do is we import this to the cycle array. Sorry, not 1 and 2. We import the indexes, which are 5 and 7, into the cycle array. And then we can put them into our double because it is size 2. So therefore, we have put all of our values into our arrays. And now we can start with our double array. So now let's move on to how we can use our double pair over here to create more cyclic shifts. So one thing which we can notice is if we have two values in here, one of ij and one of kl, we can actually form two cyclic shifts out of this. One will consist of ijl, and the other will consist of kli. And in order to make sense of this, we can actually draw it out. Say we have just one, say we use this over here, the three, four, and six, which we have. That, we already know, is a cyclic shift. Therefore, if we draw it out with the vertices i, 
j, k, and we label the 3 as i, the 4 as j, and the 6 as k, we can see that we can connect all three of these and we can form a triangle. So therefore, we can just shift this triangle in three ways. So we can shift it in any way to form a correct orientation of the psychic shift. So now let's look over at what we have. So here we have four variables, i, j, k, and l. So we have i over here, j over here, k over here, l over here. So here, we can actually, from the first i, j, l, like this. So we can keep switching this over, and then we can form the next one, KLI. So now what we have is this shared square region with two triangles that share one side. And with this, we can see that we can orientate these triangles and the square to create a perfect arrangement out of this because everything's connected. So seeing how we can form two cyclic shifts over here, what we can do is we can add two to counter. So we have three in the counter. We can erase these two values in our double. And then over here in the answer, we can add two more. We can add one value, which would be seven, one, two. And we can add another answer, which would be, let me actually write it down over here. We can add another answer, which would be five, seven, one. And then now we have all of our answers. So we can create a few global variables here. We can write one for n and k. We can create our int nums variable up here. And using the restrictions, we can see that the maximum size of it would be 2 times 10 to the power of 5. But we can add one to the end just to make sure. And then we can have our bool visited array of the same size. And then we are set here for our variables to start out with. In our int main, what we're going to do is we're going to input into test. We're going to create a variable called test and input into test. And then we're going to write a function called solve. And for the solve, we're basically just going to go what we did before. We're just going to go through the entire array. And we're going to use the booleans do cyclic shifts, do everything which we talked about before. So basically what I've done here is that I've just inputted n and k into this, and then I have inputted into the array of nums, and then I've also set our, all of the values of our visited array equal to false. Now I'm going to go through the actual loop. So the first thing that you want to go do is we want to go through the entire array and we want to spot if a position is not visited. Then we want to go into the cycle. So what this code does is that if the position we're at is not visited, then we want to mark it as visited. Over here, visited at j is equal to true. We have our integer vector cycle. And we're going to mark the index e. We're going to set it equal to visited. So we're going to set it equal to true. We're going to push back into our cycle, add it over to our cycle. And then we're going to go to the next index e, which the number links over to. After this, what we want to do is that we want to check the cycle size. If we're going to either input it over to our double, which is sets of two, or we're going to add it directly to our answer. And we'll check if the size is either two or greater than two. So what this loop basically does is, if we find a triple, then we're basically going to take the integer of c, which would be the end of the cycle. We're going to remove that element, take the next integer, remove that element, take the next integer, and then we're going to check if the size is equal to 1. If so, we're just going to remove it, just in case we get any errors, and then we're going to push all those values into our answer, and we're going to decrement k by 1. So instead of having the counter, it is a lot more efficient instead just to decrement the value of k by 1, because we will not need it afterwards. The next thing which we need to do is account for if the cycle size is equal to 2. If so, remember, we just want to push it back into our double vector. Now, over here, what we want to do is, after we get our doubles, we want to create our cyclic shift pairs with those doubles, with those pairs of integers, or indexes.
after doing so. Remember we have formed two cyclic shifts with this, so we have to decrement counter or k by two. Then at the end we can check that if we if the double is not empty, then that means that we weren't able to completely make every single cyclic shift. So we are just gonna print out negative one. Because that means that we weren't able to sort the entire thing. So we can just print out negative one and line. Then after this, we're going to check if this k is greater than zero. If it is, if it's greater than or equal to zero, that means that we have successfully created it and we can print out our values. If not, then we're going to print out negative one. And then at the end, we can have our return statement. So this is how we solve our problem.